All right. Well, you know, let's get right into it. I want to talk about a lot of things. Like, <laughs> there's so much to talk about in 49er land, like Jimmy Garoppolo, Quan Alexander. But I want to start with some recent news. Obviously, Dante Pettis being released, Julian Taylor following that up right after. Uh, what are your initial thoughts of Dante Pettis being released? Um, it's about time. <laughs> right. <laughs> Finally, I, right? Yeah, I, I just I it sucks too because I thought he was gonna be something special. Honestly, I just I loved his personality. I think I we all his, did, right? Yeah, and I love his route running. You watch him on the all twenty, like his route running is so sublime. It is so smooth, and I just I just don't know what happened. I I do not know what happened. I'd love maybe now that he's gone, maybe someone can you know have an interview with him maybe really get inside his brain i'm just really curious what happened because he yeah. looked like he was gonna be a stud and wow <laughs> same i think we all thought that looking into it in 2018 right he had that uh i wouldn't say great game he had a really good game against minnesota scored that touchdown jimmy's you know starting off the year everyone was you know riding this big wave it was going to be a big year for the niners then obviously Jimmy gets hurt. But later in that year, you saw potential from Pettis that, you know, we saw them turning a corner, if you will, going into 2019. Like, all right, we have Pettis. We're going to go into this draft. You know, we're obviously picking very high because the record w was really low. And it turned out to be, Yes, the Niners did have a successful 2019 year, but it wasn't because of Dante Pettis, which was a surprise, right? Yeah. Like we were all wondering like, all right, he's our number two. Then we have Debo at number one. Here we go, right? Wow. But I, I, it was, no. that was just crazy. I mean, because he really turned it up the end of the year with, with Mullins. And I mean, he had that great game against Seattle. I mean, he looked like he was going to be, such a key component and you thought okay him with kibble right kibble kind of exploded on the map so it's like okay we have him we have pettis we have kibble we drafted debo so it's like okay now we got that piece like man you know kendrick Bourne was kind of kind of a possession guy and it was like man then you bring jimmy back from the injury and it looked like offensively like this was going to be and, and they were a good offense last season but you just thought pest was going to be such a huge part of that. i remember if you play fantasy football like i do everybody was like yo get that pettis guy he's gonna blow up jimmy's back this cat's gonna go for over a thousand yards he's gonna be right. such a part of this offense and wow like uh, just the biggest swing in the miss i mean we've seen i i mean i hate to say aj jenkins but i mean as far as receivers go like wow like i don't know how how it went so bad so quickly it's just weird yeah something something had to happen like uh, I don't know. There was there was a press conference he had in training camp talking about there was a little friction between him and Shanahan. I don't know if you remember that. Yeah. But he did, you know, talk about that a little bit. Didn't give too much detail what that was. But it was clear. Like, last year, he didn't get no playing time. Like, Kendrick Bourne got those reps that we all thought Pettis would get. And, you know, I, the, the famous saying goes, opportunity is never lost. It's just given to someone else. And that's what happened with Kendrick Bourne case in point there and you know it, it's always been a mystery we just don't know because we saw the talent in 2018 then here comes 2019 you know this team was just a juggernaut and putting up points but Dante Pettis was nowhere to be found yeah you could look at the Steelers game like that was probably the last okay game he had last year but even then we're just like okay let's see if we can if he can consistently do it, he yeah. wasn't able to. And that was his he, highlight. That's the other yeah. game. That game winning touchdown was like his his highlight basically of the year. That was it. I was, yeah, probably a career highlight. I just I just don't know. Maybe a fresh start, but even then, like when I see him on the football field, something seems off. Like if he's not there, yeah. like his mind is somewhere else. I I just can't under, can't yeah. explain it. I, I wonder. Yeah, and hopefully, like I said, hopefully someone can pick his brain now that he's gone. And I wonder if there's something with Jimmy, because it seemed like Jimmy didn't trust him either. And I wonder if it just got to the point where Pettis felt like they're not going to throw me the ball. 
So I, I just, you mentally like, you know, maybe just checked out and he's like, well, they're not going to throw me the ball anyway. So, you know, maybe. I might as well not really care. You know, I, I'm not sure. I, I hope, I hope he does well elsewhere, but I really hope, I hope he, you know, maybe explains his half of the equation because he didn't really give too many interviews. So it's just, yeah, I'm just curious. him. And you remember um, he said in that, in that uh, press conference this offseason, he said he would explain more at a later date. I don't know if you remember that. Yeah, and, did. and the report's like, well, what do you mean? He's like, I'll explain later. And we <laughs> and never was like, it. Yeah. It was like, well, did someone die? Like, what happened? He never explained. So maybe we'll get that explanation. I I, I don't know, but just yeah, he he. Well, now he he's gonna have a lot of time in his hands if he doesn't get picked up, though. You know, it's interesting because uh, I hear Green Bay needs receivers and, you know, Green Bay runs a very similar system. Maybe they're, you know, in play for for Pettis if he clears. Yeah, there was talk. They were trying to get uh, Will Fuller, the fifth from uh, the Texans. They were trying to make a play for him, but Texans were, according to people, were asking too much. So Pettis may be, yeah, that cheap flyer that, you know, uh, maybe with Rogers, uh, you know, maybe, maybe, and then this, the styles, the offenses are kind of similar enough where it may not be such a, a huge transition for Pettis perhaps. So, yeah, you know. but it's clear, like after um, the whole Pettis thing, Shanahan just looked differently at his receivers. Like I'm going to need someone who's going to be physical um, at blocking um, at the point of attack and, you know, Debo, Ayuk being the following uh, draft picks, you know, is just a different style. I think Kyle Shanahan just said, you know what, forget that. Forget what that finesse crap. I'm going to get some football players. Like, not not saying Dante Pettis isn't, but, you know, it's a mentality too. Yeah, a different style for sure. Uh, Pettis is more that smooth guy like you're not thinking of him as a yak guy you know he's gonna he's not right. gonna pull anybody over definitely a completely different style than like you said what shanahan clearly wants in his in his receivers and just in his players in general like every, even born you know will take a hit and he gets a little yak now as much as the other guys but he's not afraid to take a hit either so definitely just a different player than what shanahan clearly wanted yeah oh yeah and i love me some some kendrick born um you know, he does get criticized because of his drops. He does drop a lot of footballs, but uh, I really think you need a player like that, like just high energy and just durable. Like you can't really say much about, you know, a lot of players being durable for the Niners right now. You know, Kendrick Bourne has been there. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I love, I love Bourne. I just kind of like his story. I love those guys who aren't highly drafted, who don't come from big schools, who don't have the, buzz and work their butts off and make it like those are i i think you need a couple of those guys i think to kind of keep keep the locker room balanced right the guys who can keep those the kind of the guys who come from alabama or maybe have things handed to them they're just athletic freaks yeah they say yeah if you don't you know that old saying you know hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard you need a couple of those guys to kind of point at and say, Hey, see, see Kendrick Bourne. Like he's not as fast as he's not as tall. He's not, but he's out working you. And if you yeah. don't step it up, he's going to be starting over you. And I think you need those guys to kind of that, that are that example, you know? Yeah. Cause it, it's like Pettis has more skill set than Bourne. Oh, yeah. But Bourne just seems to have way, he's like strong minded at just, you know, saying, all right, I'm, I'm just going to go up there and catch it, and I know I'm going to get hit and still yeah. make that catch. Like, he's made some tough catches. Yeah, he's got that. He's got that, what they call it. He's got that dog in him, you know. Yeah. He just really seems to just, yeah. I mean, and like I said, durable, too. Like, I don't, has he, I don't even think he's missed a start, I don't think. I don't think he's missed Yeah, I, I don't think so. Not that I remember. So, yeah, I mean, on the team that seems to lose – five players every you know every time i wake up you know he's the one guy who i mean probably at this point it's probably the him and maybe warner probably the most games started uh Knock on wood, right <laughs> at this point like it's probably those two i can't think of anybody else who has as many consecutive starts as they have right now 